Hey, I'm Lauren from TastyPC.TV and today I'm doing part 3 of my review of the Corsair Obsidian 900D. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details as to why it took so long for me to get this video to you, but in part 1 I had a look around the empty case and in part 2 I did a time-lapse installation and I'll put a link to both those videos in the description below but you can also find them on my channel. In this video I'm just going to take you for a look around the finished build and conclude my thoughts on the case. So let's get started. Okay, so with this build, I've used all monsoon fittings, which I do really love, and I'm going to do a separate video on them. Um, but in the top, I've got UT60 480 rad in push pull. At the bottom, I've got an ST30 480 in push, and at the back, a Monster 240 in pull. And basically, the loop just goes um, a tube from the pump bay res up behind the radiator into the side, then down into the motherboard, um, into the CPU block, down through the graphics cards, into the bottom radiator. And then I've been using two right angled rotaries, kind of to make like a straight tube between the two bottom rads and then that rad at the back has got a tube um, with an anti-kink coil on it up the back and then back into the pump bay res. Um, now I know that there's like a trend at the moment with people using like acrylic tubing to get like really short straight clean tubes and even though I really love how that looks personally in my own rigs I prefer the tubes to not be completely straight and to kind of be more like flowy because I think it just kind of gives the rig like more character a more kind of like energy and like life if you get what I mean um but while I was playing this rig I was thinking of putting well I did want to put a tube res there um because obviously it's really empty and looks quite bland um but unfortunately I don't actually have one so even though it would look significantly better with a tube res I don't think it actually looks all that bad with a bay res um also when I was doing the installation I was using the Corsair Dominate Platinums but since then NDA's lifted so I swapped to Corsair's new Vengeance Pro memory in red because I think it suits the build much better. Also the tubing isn't actually red, it's pink and it's not um, UV red if that's what you're thinking. It is genuinely pink tubing, it's just really confused <laughs> pink tubing. It's like um, that like two-tone car paint where from some angles it's red and from some angles it's pink. But either way I do really love it. So for the graphics cards, I've gone with two water-cooled NVIDIA Palette GTX 670s. And these are quite short cards, so in a case like the 900D, it does look a little bit silly. Um, but I do really love the cards, so it will be very helpful for future builds. But I do think if you're going with the 900D, then you should try to get graphics cards with full-length PCBs. Um, but one thing I should mention is because the case kind of like extends out, it means you can't freely get to the PCI mounts, meaning that it can be difficult to undo the thumb screws, because um, you can't get a screwdriver in there. But Corsair have included like a Phillips head like Allen key for you to use, although it can still be a bit of a pain, so it's just something I thought I should point out. One issue I did have when building this rig is that with a 60mm radiator and push pull in the roof and this motherboard, you can't actually have the 8-pin CPU cable and the rear fitting in at the same time. So what I had to do was put a cap there and then use the whole um, here at the end of the radiator instead, and then I got two right angled rotaries, put them together to make kind of like a U shape so that um, I could have the tube running straight along the back of the radiator, which actually looks better, although it's just something to be aware of. So for the power supply, I ended up using the X1200i. Um, I know it's overkill for how many watts this system needs, but it meant that I could use the sexy red cables I've got for it, and also just to show you that even with the longest power supplies, you can still comfortably fit a 240 rad and have plenty of space for cable management. And then obviously because the power supply is at the back, I put the thick radiator at the back as well, and a thin radiator at the front, meaning that I still had enough space to have a tube run um, between the two radiators, but also to lay things like flex lights across the floor. So looking at the back of the case, firstly I have to say that I haven't actually plugged in any of the fans, and the reason is is that Phoebe sent me this really nice one free pin to nine free pin um, fan splitter, and then Corsair, <laughs> rather sending me their free pin SP120s, sent me their new PWM fans. So I've just kind of like tucked the cables out of the way. Um, but you do have plenty of space for cable management. I mean, you've got enough space to even fit water cooling tubes. Although I'm not very keen on these clips, I mean even though they're much better than with the C70, you can't actually fit all that much behind them. So I prefer it if they just didn't use them and you could just cable tie it up anyway. Um, also I haven't filled the hard drive cages, um, just because you know I wanted to show you that even if you water cooled the case, you could still have you know six hard drives or solid state drives. Um, but looking at the back of the case, I don't really have any problems with it. I mean it's got loads of cable management grommets and plenty of space to work with. So moving on to whether I think the 900D should get an award or not, firstly um, I do have a new award system, it's a little bit different, so if you are confused at all I'll put the details in the description below. 
Um, but the 900D is quite an extreme case with a more expensive price tag. And for that reason, it means it instantly can't get my juicy, sweet or tasty awards. So the question is, is does it deserve my creamy award or not? Now, I do have a few niggles with this case, which I've covered during the review. Also, in some areas, I feel like it has kind of less of like a luxurious feel and more of like an industrial feel, like you'd expect from like a manufacturer like Phobia. Um, I do want to be like really protective of my awards and only give them out if I feel like a product like 100% deserves them. Um, so then looking at what this case can do, um, now it has been pretty much designed from the ground up to be like the absolute 100% builder's dream. Um, you know, in like pretty much every way. It can fit five radiators in it, over 20 fans on those rads, two power supplies, the biggest mower boards, and you could easily spend over a grand on water cooling parts for this case alone. Um, or you could buy the extra hard drive cages and have like an epic server. And I think for all those reasons, the little like, niggles that I had seem so insignificant that I don't think this case deserves anything less than the Creamy Award. And actually, if it was cheaper, it would probably be getting the Tasty Award. Um, and I know that cases have been getting smaller recently, and some people are starting to prefer many OTX builds, you know, graphics cards getting smaller, parts have been getting cooler and more efficient, except of course some recent exceptions. Um, and even companies like Corsair have been looking to make smaller cases like the 350D. And like, do I see Corsair in a year's time making like, or no, no, whenever, making like a 1000D, which is bigger than this? At the moment, no. And I can't help but feel like the way the technology is going, this is kind of like, I only really see like, um, like extreme modders or companies like Case Labs making cases like this. I see more like, um, mainstream manufacturers moving to smaller cases and for that reason I almost feel like there's a possibility, I mean it might not be the case, but there is a possibility that this case could kind of represent the end of an era. Um, but that was my review of Corsair's Obsidian 900D. If you like the video hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.